but we just don't have that in Europe. Europe you can just sit there for hours and nobody will bother you unless uh, bears are a very real thing up here and i when i grew up we had bears in our backyard hey travel lovers welcome to a wanderlust for life i'm jessica and on this channel we talk about european travel expat life and travel tips and today i've brought you to my hometown so i am from a small town in virginia about an hour west of washington dc and we're here in the forest. This isn't my home, my childhood home. This is a rental and we're about ready to leave. But I wanted to talk to you about some of the like reverse culture shocks that I've been seeing. Now this is uh, a Patreon requested video. So if you wanna join Patreon, I will leave the link down below for you. We have live streams every other month and there's other like bits that you can get with that. And you can also request videos like this. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is just how everything is different but the same. So like I grew up in a smaller town. I grew up in the town my whole life. So um, we moved houses a couple times, but all within the same town. So when I was 16, I drove the same routes, right? Like you drive from one place to another and that's pretty much your life. <laughs> so when my mom gave me the car to borrow, I just instinctively went to my grandmother's house. Like, I mean, that's where I was supposed to go, but like how I drove there, how I actually physically drove, how I took every turn, how fast I was going, all of it, it was just muscle memory. It was the weirdest thing. I don't really understand how something can be just so the same. Like your your brain just like has these neural pathways that just make things happen. And I think it's so bonkers, but also a lot of things change as well. So like the downtown has changed. It's very nice now. Um, the outside of town has changed, gotten bigger. And also in Harrisonburg where I used to work and live before I moved to Amsterdam, that whole area is just growing, like growing a lot. And so it's, you know, especially in that area, I felt a little bit more jarred by things changing because you couldn't really just take the same path you always have because roads have been um, extended, connected. Um, so it's, it's very, very different. Also, I wanna point out, because we were in the forest, <laughs> This, this is what you get when you're here. So you have dogs barking, you have kids yelling, you have the birds, of course, the wind rustling. Um, sometimes there's gunfire going off back there. <laughs> it's a bit weird up in here, but I also grew up on a mountain, so it, it's not weird to me, but I guess we were the kids on the mountain because there was nobody else around. <laughs> so if you hear all of that, it's just the ambiance. Embrace it. So actually the first thing that we noticed when we got here was English being spoken everywhere. So the weird thing about that is we're not used to, especially American English being spoken everywhere to where it's very clear, like for our brains and you can understand everything. And it's, it's very tiring, it's exhausting because you basically unintentionally eavesdrop on everybody. And you know, in Europe, either people have an accent when they're speaking English or they're not speaking English at all. And you can kind of tone it out unless it's like somebody that you know, you recognize their voice. And I think that's really interesting because I find it almost as tiring as trying to speak Dutch, even though this is my native language, but that's almost the problem is it's my native language, my native accent, things like that. All right, let's talk about food because I think this is like one of the biggest things for me. First of all, portion sizes are bigger and it's different kinds of food. So it's like in Europe, you're used to certain kinds of food everywhere that you go, whether that's Italian or whatever. I say Italian because that's my favorite kind of food. Um, but here, like it's, you know, bigger, it's fried, it's um, shrimp and grits, it's Pancakes, yes, I know we have pancakes in the Netherlands. I do love those too. But I also really, really, really love American pancakes, slathered in butter, maple syrup, and all of that. So yeah, food is just completely different, but I do love it. And this is the first time that we've come back and not really felt um, sick to our stomachs. So I don't know what we're doing differently, but it's kind of nice. When you go out to eat, we have free sodas usually, soda refills. So you buy a soda and then they refill it however many times you want. And they're big, like they're big, the big plastic, like old Coca-Cola cups is what I think of, or Pepsi cups. And like the first time I got one, when I sat down here, I was just like, oh, I forgot about the sizes. <laughs> it's massive. And then you can drink as much as you want. On the same token, free water with ice everywhere you go. In Europe, if you've traveled to Europe, if you're American and you've traveled to Europe, you, you notice that 
there are a lot of places that won't serve you tap water for instance they want to charge you for water and it's kind of a big thing like if you want tap water in some places in some places it's fine um but here water's free pretty much all the time unless you get um you know bottled water which makes sense the service is completely different now virginia is basically the most northern part of the south so we take service very seriously but it just kind of means that they're kind of always popping in asking if everything's okay um, i did notice a lot that people are leaving the check on the table before you ask for it which i i think is really weird i don't remember that they did that before we left but maybe they did i don't i don't remember that but i just think that's weird because in europe you can just sit there for hours and nobody will bother you unless you um, you know raise your hand try to get somebody's attention and they're just like for your convenience you know you can have this and yeah i don't know like they're very very nice but they're also like here's your check <laughs> bye you know kind of a thing but they're also very nice because the tipping culture i know you all have a lot of opinions about the tipping culture especially europeans because this is very very different so basically in europe you for the most part you tip when it's good service and 10 percent maybe maybe more depending on where you are or how good the service was but it's really for good service it's not because you have to pay their bills and in the u.s i think minimum is 20 percent. i think 25 is getting to be normal let me know down below if, if you have any insights into that and one of the reasons for that for europeans who may not know tipping jobs they are actually paid a lower minimum wage than regular minimum wage and i don't know what it is in virginia i want to say it's about three dollars i'll leave it on the screen if i'm wrong and so that is their minimum wage. That's that's what their paycheck is going to be. So these tips are actually um, their income. And that's why it's so important to tip. So whether or not you agree with it, if you don't tip, they're not getting an income. And the other weird thing is that there's a lot of jobs that aren't under that tipping job category that still are expected to get tips and things like that so you really have to kind of understand the culture when you come over here so that you're not slighting somebody for really no reason other than it's just different than what you know along the same lines of the friendly thing the sweetie honey darling kind of thing it's kind of weird because everybody says it and again because we're in the south like it's a very normal thing it's not meant to be offensive or demeaning or anything like that it's just how people talk here and as much as it didn't bother me and it, I guess it still doesn't, it just is very jarring for my brain to be told that. It's like, um, are you ready, sweetie? Like if somebody's taking your order or something like that. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a very different kind of interaction, if that makes sense. Keeping with the food theme, um, big fridges, big fridges, big freezers, second freezers, like deep freezers. Um, we don't have that, I don't, I don't know. Does anywhere in Europe really do like the American size fridges and freezers? I know like more people are getting them, but um, like we have, I'd say like a half size fridge at home and freezer. So I like it because then you just don't have it crammed with stuff like all the time. And sales tax because, okay, we bought about two stickers at a comic book store. Yeah, I'm, I'm one of those. I got a BB-8 sticker from Star Wars and I got a Doctor Who sticker from Doctor Who and it was gonna be ten dollars exactly but it was like ten fifty one and I was like oh, why can't it just be ten dollars you know like why do we have to make this so difficult <laughs> the big stores like big box stores are absolutely everywhere we're talking Walmart we're talking Target like all of those places and then of course you have the smaller stores like we go to Kohl's when we're here um, I also go to TJ Maxx and Ross because I love shopping at those places and it's like, aside from the clothing stores, like you can just get everything that you want. So like I was getting some medication at Walmart and then you can also buy your groceries and then you can buy underwear if you want. Like they have absolutely everything. And as convenient as it is, it's also, I don't know, like I don't even find it weird. Like I can't even say that I find it weird. Maybe it shouldn't even be in this video because I'm so used to it, but we just don't have that in Europe like that I know about at all and yeah I don't know I don't know if it's good or bad I don't know that I like it I mean I think it really takes away from independent stores also I found out at least in the Shenandoah Valley that malls are dying so that's interesting because I mean that's kind of a big box store but with individual shops you know so yeah that 
that was a bit weird. I did not expect that to happen. I think that was, you know, because of the time since 2020 and, you know, a lot of people just couldn't go to the mall. And I think a lot of places just, yeah. Um, but yeah, big box stores, they're just kind of bonkers and they're so big. And because of that, sometimes they're really busy and they're a bit anxiety inducing because they're so big and there's so many people and yeah, it's just weird. Let's talk about cars, shall we? So first of all, you all know in the US, in most places, like 98% of places, if not 99, you need a car, okay? And I mean, again, I'm used to it, but then like when we were driving around, I was like, oh, you know, we're gonna probably try to find the closest parking spot and that's just silly. And yes, it is because you're not walking that far anyway. And in Europe, you, you're always walking, right? But here's the thing is parking lots feel very, very dangerous. So I park closer because I'm not comfortable walking in a parking lot. Also, it's been very, very hot here. So <laughs> that's another part of that reason. But yeah, it's weird because some places will have you know, like the head to head parking spots and then there'll be a sidewalk in the middle, which I kind of like those better because if you're walking behind cars, I hate walking behind cars, but also like you just don't know what's happening. At least if you're on that sidewalk bit, you don't have to worry about it so much. So yeah, I, the, just very, very car centric and the cars are just massive. Like they're just massive. And it's like, you know, why do you need a vehicle that big when in Amsterdam people are hauling three kids on a bike? You know, um, Sean made the comment, like, if you drive by people's houses with a two person house, they'll have three cars. And I was like, well, yeah, obviously they have their daily driver and then they have their weekend car and then there's two people. So they need two daily drivers. And that's so normal to me. But it's also like, why? I mean, part of the reason why, in case you're wondering, is um, the weekender might be bigger so that you're, you're hauling stuff to go to the lake, to go to the mountains, whatever. And your daily driver has really good gas mileage, generally speaking. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of bonkers, right? Like when we're so used to seeing people haul everything on a bike or in a tiny car. It's just, it's very different, right? The roads are so different. So it's like, you know, the speed limits are constantly changing and you have people's driveways pulling out on a 55 mile an hour road. And it's just, it's crazy because... In a lot of Europe, things are built so that, you know, it's safer for everybody involved, for the drivers, for pedestrians, for cyclists, for everybody. Because, you know, typically you're not going to be pulling out on a 55 mile an hour road in Europe. I don't believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but like there's neighborhoods for that. And then if you have not seen the YouTube channel, not just bikes, you have to go see it because it really explains this difference and it's gonna explain it a heck of a lot better than I can. But basically roads are designed to do, to have primary functions and a residential road is gonna be different than a road to get from like one place to another, if that makes sense. But go watch that channel and you'll understand how people drive i'm sorry but at least in virginia people are insane actually insane the amount of tailgating i've seen the amount of cutting people off i've seen um i actually had to beep at somebody i never do that because they ran a red light and then in front royal like we were coming through and somebody i don't think they noticed the stoplight and they were like two car lengths like i saw them come i saw leaves underneath my feet um he was like two car lengths ahead of the stop line because he stopped too late. And I'm like, why are people such bad drivers here? And don't even get me started on Interstate 81. I hate that road. It's, it's horrible and it's just very dangerous. I don't think there's any other way around it. It's very dangerous. I hated driving it when I lived here. So basically 81 got me between where I lived and where my family was. And I still hate driving it. Luckily there are alternatives <laughs> if you get super nervous about it. Um, so don't let it turn you off if you're coming to the area because it is a very, very beautiful area. But yeah, 81 is just always busy now and always dangerous. And I keep looking behind me because uh, bears are a very real thing up here. And I, when I grew up, we had bears in our backyard. So I'm yeah, we found a sticker of a bear and Sean was like, do you want this? I'm like, I don't need to be reminded of some of the scariest uh, times in my life. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know people sometimes, like I think of Alex and Emma, when they saw a deer in the US, they're like, oh my God, deer. And I'm like, that is a daily occurrence. We saw one when we were coming up here. Um, so it is really weird how we all, all grow up differently and we find interesting things in things that other people find completely normal. And I'm wrapping up with toilets. 
Yes, so you all know about, I think, the gaps in the toilet stalls a lot. I think it's just a squirrel. <laughs> but he's making a lot of noise. Because bears can't really sneak up on you when it's this dense. But still a little freaked out. Um, but also, just saying restroom, because it's a polite way to ask for a toilet in the U.S. Versus in Europe, when you ask for the toilet... I don't know, I know that's a weird one, but I had to like catch myself <laughs> when I was here because if you say, where's the toilet? I think here it just, it kind of rubs people the wrong way. I don't know, I think it would for me. But yeah, these are just like little things. I have a bunch of videos uh, coming up from my experience here, from everything, from like what, how I pack when I come here so that I can prep to bring things back, what kinds of things I wanna take back and what I miss most about Virginia and the US. So if you want to see those videos along with more Netherlands videos, more travel videos, more packing tips, things like that, make sure you subscribe if you aren't already and please go ahead and like the video. Leave me a comment down below of what you think you would miss if you left your hometown. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.